Hey, have you ever been listening to NPR and said to yourself, boy, I'd love to skip right over this and get to the next thing? I- I'm sure you have, like every time Car Talk comes on, right? Well, now you can get exactly what you want from NPR just by downloading the NPR One app. You, you put it on your phone, and it's like Pandora for NPR. It feeds you story after story, and, and if you're not interested in, say, Steve Inskeep's story on the sex life of the Ecuadorian snail, you just swipe and go to the next story. It's brilliant. Find NPR ONE at your app store and get Hello and welcome to Car Talk from National Public Radio with us, Click and Clack, the Tappert Brothers. And we're broadcasting this week from the Center for Grant Money here at Car Talk Plaza. We have a new plan, <laughs> a new approach for funding. Get this. We're applying for a grant from the National Institutes of Health, the NIH. Now, Not it, invented here. Otherwise known as not invented here. Not invented here. Yeah. As everyone knows, we've been utterly unsuccessful in trying to raise money from outside sources to do this show. Why? Well, we can't get money from anyone remotely connected with the automotive industry. I don't understand why that is. Because we've ticked them all off, <laughs> and they won't touch us with a 10-foot crankshaft. We've Who needs ticked, them? Who needs them? We've ticked off educators. Yeah. They're out. Yeah. Lawyers, it goes on say, after all those jokes it. on the website. Politicians? Oof. Hopeless. Hollywood, they hate Un. us. Cellular phone makers. <laughs> Done for. <laughs> Consumer goods. No. Uh, insurance companies. Oh. <laughs> the judicial system. Yeah. No good. Law enforcement. No. No. The entire country of France. <laughs> <laughs> There's nobody left. So we're applying. Don't forget the Middle East. Oh, the, yeah, whole, well, the entire Middle East. So we're applying yeah. for an NIH grant based on the following information. Here it is. My darling sister-in-law, Monique, sent me this. It says, the next, this is from Shape Magazine. Yes. She sent it to me because she knew I was in such great shape. Yeah, she subscribes to Shape and I get out of Shape <laughs> So I mean, this is a little item. Here's Miss a, Shape. It says, the next time you want to boost your health, skip the health club and go to a comedy club. According to Stanford University School of Medicine psychiatrist William Fry, laughing burns calories and helps your health. While exact caloric expenditure is not yet known, it is thought that a hundred good laughs, now get this, equals the physiological benefits of 10 minutes on a rowing machine. Wow. A hundred good laughs. Mirthful laughter has a positive impact on many physiological functions. The brain is stimulated. Da, 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 da. Now, here's why I read this. Because out of all this, she chose to underline. And if you laugh hard enough, it'll clear your sinuses. <laughs> clear sinuses. <laughs> she underlines one line. It says uh, the, 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 the brain is stimulated with greater alertness. Fry says which may enhance memory, sociability, da 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 And she underlines, the quality of the wit doesn't seem to matter. <laughs> Only the quantity. <laughs> no, I want, what, what did she mean by that? I don't know. <laughs> no, <laughs> so based on this, I suppose we can raise some money to study it. We'll just study it. Who said you that? Your wife. Oh my <laughs> <laughs> interesting. Yeah. yeah, I thought it was interesting too. So no more rowing machines, no more treadmills, no more. Well, who is that? What is that company that makes that thing you can't stand on? You keep falling off. Nordic oh, track. Oh yeah, the Nordic torture. Yeah, <laughs> the Nordic. The Nordic. Well, torture. I remember years ago, actually yeah. maybe about six months ago, watching a Three Stooges episode, and I don't remember the gist of it except that. The um, one of the main characters besides the Stooges was the king of Cole, Slovenia, <laughs> King Cole, king and every Cole. day. <laughs> <laughs> when did they get the stuff? And every day he would have his subjects come into where wherever he sat on his throne, and they would have their daily laugh, and they would just look at each other and start laughing. Andrew and I do that all the time. <laughs> well, who was it? Was it Norman Cousins? That's the guy, right? Who claims to have saved his own life by laughing himself silly? Yes. Or you could laugh yourself to death. <laughs> oh, one way or the other. Too. So, if you, very, look, if, you want, if you want to call us about your car, your health, your laugh, or anything else. Or if you ha- have some grant money that you'd like to give us, <laughs> don't forget, don't leave that out. <laughs> don't forget old Tom and Ray. <laughs> Our number is 888 Car Talk. That's 1 888 227 8255. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, this is Tamara, and I'm calling from Hadley, Massachusetts. Tamara. Are you calling today, or are you calling tomorrow? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Remember now, Tamara, the quality of the wit doesn't matter, only the quantity. 
right. Well, that goes with answers to car questions as well. <laughs> <laughs> the quality of the car question answer doesn't matter. Well, I think it's Only, obvious that well, we don't know the answer. We give a lot of them. We give all. Yeah, we speak a lot about it. Well, this has both quality and quantity. So. Oh, good. It could fit in. Where are you from tomorrow? Hadley, Mass. Hadley, Mass. Oh, I, well, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> that happens a lot. It's okay. <laughs> Yeah. Here's my problem. I have a 1983 Nissan Sentra, mm -hmm. and I've had it for over three years now, and it's given me absolutely no problem. But about half a year ago, it started dying whenever it would rain or snow out. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, and it only seems to happen on the freeway when I'm going above 60 miles an hour. I just drive along fine for about 30 or 40 miles, and then it just stops accelerating. Wait, wait, is the engine running at this time? Yeah, the engine's running. Engine's running, but the no power. Running, but no power, and I pull over to the side of the road, and I shut the car off, and I sit there for a few minutes and make sure you know people don't crash into me and trucks are whizzing by, and then I start it up again, and I get back on the freeway, and I keep going. And it only does this when it rains or when it snows out. Uh huh. In complete dry, sunny, lovely weather, no problems. Uh, I believe you yeah. have a textbook case. Yeah. You think so? Textbook. Textbook yeah. case. That would be good. Of carburetor icing. Yo! -ho! And what? in order for this to happen, the temperature... Carburetor icing. The temperature has to be... If it's 70 degrees, this is unlikely to happen. It has to probably be 50 degrees or less and raining. Okay. And And what's happening is, as the air, which is laden with moisture gets sucked into your engine through the carburetor. Yeah. Something called the Venturi effects co effect causes a temperature drop. Mm. And that temperature drop is enough to lower that air temperature from 40 or 50 degrees even. Okay. To 30 degrees or less, which, as we know, will cause ice crystals to form. And they form in the throat of the carburetor. And pretty soon your carburetor is choking, just like if you had a new potato lodged in your windpipe. <laughs> Right. And in the carburetor being unable to breathe because of this blockage will make the car run very poorly with low power because you're restricting the flow of air. So what 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 I don't if I stop the car and shut it off, what makes it de ice? The ice or de melts. The ice melts because you got the latent heat of the engine and you've stopped and you, the mechanism for making the ice. You no longer have the venturi effect. The venturi effect is the flow of the air down the throat of the carburetor. So now you stop that from happening. You stop making new ice. You melt the old ice, and bingo, you're back on the road again. Yeah. On now, the road again. The way, <laughs> what's wrong with your car is that one of two things is going on. Uh, either the little tube that's supposed to convey hot air from the exhaust manifold up into the snorkel of the air cleaner is missing. Yeah. Uh, that's or, absolutely missing. I mean, you can count on it. Okay. Oh, yeah. We're 25 <laughs> years old. <laughs> we lose them all the time. It, it's, ma it's made out of either paper or some corrugated aluminum, okay. and they disintegrate or they fall off. If the tube isn't missing, yeah. uh, then it's likely that something called the thermal vacuum switch, which operates the door in that snorkel, okay. is broken. Okay. So both so, of which are relatively simple to fix and cheap. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, I mean, the tube costs just a few dollars, and you'll never find a thermal vacuum switch at the dealership. Uh, you'll have to go to a, uh, a junkyard and get one off an old air cleaner. Oh, geez. Well, and then it's then probably in the junkyard <laughs> because it didn't work either. Yeah, just buy the whole air cleaner and throw it right on there. Yeah, or okay. maybe buy the whole car. You'll have a spare car, <laughs> companion car. <laughs> yeah. I would love to do that instead. Well, that, that's going to fix it. Guarantee it. Yeah, guarantee it. Yeah. Did, you, did you write it all down? I, I wrote it all down. You did. Good. Oh, I was hoping you hadn't. You'd have to spend 20 <laughs> bucks for a tape of the show. But <laughs> <laughs> can't sell those tapes for nothing. See you tomorrow. Thanks, Thanks for calling. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll Bye. see you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye. I mean, we'll see you tomorrow. one <laughs> 888 or 1-888-227-8255. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, uh, my name is Mike. I'm from uh, Virginia. Where in Virginia, Mike? Um, it's Quinton, Virginia. It's uh, between Richmond and Williamsburg. Oh, right near Fairview. Is it near Fairview? No, it's uh, south of there, near, near Williamsburg, near the coast. I got it. Oh, yeah. Um, I got a little problem. I got a Ford conversion van. Yeah. My left rear tire keeps falling off. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I'm, I'm getting on the highway down here, 295, picking up to 65 miles an hour, and I feel a jolt, and I look at my rear view... You know, the outside mirror, the side mirror? Yeah. And my left rear tire is gone, and I'm shooting sparks up. <laughs> my tire passes me on the right. <laughs> and uh, then I pulled off, and uh, I had a hard time getting it under control and everything, and brought it back to the guy that uh, just, just changed the brakes, and I blamed him for not putting the lug nuts back on. Uh -huh. He swore he did. Then it happened again 
when Ooh. I was coming home, you know, close to home. I was only going like 10 miles an hour. So I went back to the same guy, and he knew he put the lug nuts on. He knew he put them on tight. Oh, I bet he put them on extra tight. Yeah. And he said there was no damage to the to the posts. He could use the same posts again. The studs. Yeah, after the second time. But the lug nuts were gone? The lug nuts were gone. So I went to um, the, the guy I originally bought it from, the, you know, the dealer. He's a car dealer. Mm -hmm. And he said my problem was I have aluminum turbine wheels, and nobody should ever trust them that we should get rid of them. So oh. I went to a Ford dealer to see if he would change the wheels for me. And he told me that I was nuts, the guy was nuts, and it wasn't a problem that... Someone was loosening my lug nuts. No, no one's, loosening, no one's loosening. No one's loosening your lug nuts. Uh, it's very likely to be the wheels. And I've, in fact, I'm hard pressed to think of anything else it could be. Yeah. Right. In, unless, unless the studs are faulty, but it's very, it's a very simple matter to change those studs. Yeah. They should get replaced. But boy, I, I would hate to be the one that would have to test drive this to find <laughs> out if the theory is right. I mean, how long did after the? After that happened the first time. Well, how much? How long did you drive it was the first month, time? It was a month uh, between the first time and the second time. And how about between the uh, the first time and the time that they did the brake job? Uh, was that that was like two days? Two days. Two days. Oh, so it lasted a lot and longer. And yet it's only this one wheel. Yeah, at, at both times it's the same wheel. And it's the left rear. Yeah. And now, now, now you have you gone... 130,000 miles on this, and this has never happened before. How long have you had the wheels, however? Uh, the wheels came with it. Wow. Yeah, whoever converted it, you know, whoever... Yeah. Okay, here's, here's the test. Now, the fact that it has... It's, it's more likely to happen on the left side of the vehicle. Yeah. Because okay. the wheels are turning in a direction which makes the lug nuts turn counterclockwise, which is the way you would turn them to take them off. Uh-huh. Okay, now, the fact that it hasn't happened in the front... You can now find out if it's the wheel. Maybe you can't find out if it's the wheel. Put that wheel. Switch those two wheels on the left side. Right. Whoa, and this is one dangerous. Of you guys to come down and drive it. No, no. <laughs> Who's gonna drive it? That means when it, if it's the wheel, the left front wheel is gonna fall off. Can you get your mother-in-law to drive it? <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't have said that, Thomas. You'll have the eye of every, every mother-in-law in the land. <laughs> I have vowed never to say anything bad about mothers-in-law. Right. Now, well, this my my mother-in-law, I, I wouldn't want to put her in that situation. <laughs> Did you have a wheel cover on this thing when the wheel nuts fell off? A hubcap? No, you can't. No, because no, I didn't have anything. Okay. See, if you had a hubcap, you would, you would have known they were going to fall off. You would have heard this awful... Heard them rattling around. Rattling around. Yeah. But you have these fancy wheels that don't have hubcaps. Right. See, that's what the, the oh. guy, when I went back to him, the guy I bought it from... He said, take these turbine aluminum things off and put on old-fashioned wheels with hubcaps, he said. <laughs> well, I mean, that certainly was one way to solve the problem. Uh, and if, if I had to, I think, risk losing another wheel. And, uh -huh. and you had no, you had some warning. I mean, you knew something was going on. When it started, right, when it started, right before it happened, the, the, um, oh. it felt almost like a flat tire. Like sure, I mean, you, you might only have seconds warning when that happens. Yeah. But this, this is really serious, Mike. I, I mean, if, if it were I, and I cared about my life, I would immediately take these wheels off and put steel wheels on it. You would, okay. I know what I would do. I would like to do on 747s. I'd drill them through and wire them together. Yeah. Go to the junkyard. You can buy four wheels for 100 bucks. Right. And have them mounted and take care of it because you, this is bad, you, yes, as, it's as bad. you well know. <laughs> Good luck, Mike, and do it soon. Thanks a lot. All righty. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. one <laughs> 888 talk or one 227 Eight two five five. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, this is Mary. I'm Hi. from Culver, Indiana. Hi, Mary from Culver, Indiana. What's going on? Well, I have a question. Um, it's more one of those husband and wife things that we'd like you to settle. Yeah. My husband and I go on a lot of long road trips. We really, really like that. We like the back roads and everything. And occasionally, um, as we're driving along, we i got to make sure I say this correctly. I, was, I, I have said we pass an odor, but that's not what I really mean. We, we encounter an odor from the outside coming into the car. Oh, oh. Yes. An encounter, yeah. <laughs> that's another story. Okay. Passing um, is, a, yeah, okay. Right. So encounter. we're driving along and say, like, you know, we pass maybe where a skunk has been yes. or an industrial odor or, you know, some car that's kind of emitting some things. Yeah. And my husband has this, what I call a screwball theory, that if he rolls down his window, like, immediately, as soon as we smell this, that that's better for everybody involved and that the odor will dissipate more quickly. Whereas, you wait, know, wait, that when, only works if the odor is coming from inside well, the car. That's what I'm thinking. I can attest to that. <laughs> but, but, right. And this isn't, we're, we are not generating this odor. <laughs> when you encounter this odor, 
this happens with the windows closed? Exactly. Sure, All the because... windows are rolled up and everything. And he okay. will do this whether it's January or June. He will. Okay. And so <laughs> and his... I think, you know, just grin and bear it and drive fast. Get out of there. So. See, now, I've always operated on this theory <laughs> that if, if if I wanted to <laughs> how can I delicately say this? You can't. Say if, <laughs> if I if, if I wanted to unleash an odor of my own, right. the time to do it <laughs> is when you've encountered some other odor <laughs> that might go. mask <laughs> the, your yeah, odor. That's a good point. Right? And and of course you'd open the window just to be on the safe side. <laughs> well, that might be what's happening. No. <laughs> oh no. I mean... No, but he does this and I thought, oh, he's the only one. I mean he's brilliant that he's quirky. And I thought, oh, he's the only one. So then we were I don't know, we were driving a student someplace one time. We're both teachers. And this happened. He rolled down the window. She goes, oh, my dad does that all the time. And I'm thinking, oh, my goodness. <laughs> you know? Well, it is true, I suppose, really? that when you hmm. open a window, you can get enough of a, hmm. uh, what do they call that, a, a draft, you know, hmm. like a chimney effect. Yeah. Well, of course. That you're drawing... When you open the windows, you're going to suck out everything that's in the car already. Yeah. Right. So there may be something to it. Possibly. He yeah. says that he developed this. He grew up in Amish country in northern India. Well, you know, I, I, the next time he does this, though, see if he if he leans yeah. and lifts a cheek or anything, because cause that could be a dead well, giveaway that there's something else going on. Yeah, just just I, a I thought. I keep an eye out for that. But he says he actually developed this in relation to, you know, being around a lot of horses and buggies, you know, on the road. So oh, I, I happen to think them. he's right. Well, I happen to think really? he's right, too, but I happen Uh-oh. to think he may be up to something else as well. So. You know, I'm going to keep an eye on the guy. <laughs> Well, thank you. Well, thank you for calling, Mary. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> hey, uh, were you able to solve last week's puzzle about the seven-letter word? No, I couldn't get it. I was surprised, though, how quickly everyone else around here figured it out. They did? I mean, yeah. As soon as we walked out of the studio last week, everyone started yelling out the answer. Oh, yeah? Fathead! No, fathead! <laughs> they weren't answering the puzzle. <laughs> dope. They always yell that when you come out of the studio. <laughs> no, no, no. They usually yell a seven-letter word that we can't say on the radio. That's why I thought they were answering the puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> well, the seven-letter word in last week's puzzle contained all five vowels. And we'll be back with the answer along with more of your calls in just a minute. Well, the front window needs a little That's a beanbag chair There's a snow train stuck on a left rear tire Oh, Pinto Squire And even though the NPR mail ladies sprinkle a little more powdered laxative on our Valentine's Day candies when they, they hear us say it, this is NPR. Support for the Car Talk podcast comes from Simply Safe, an award winning home security company. Their system uses an arsenal of wireless sensors and has 24 7 professional monitoring. Plus, you pay by month and never get tricked into a long term contract. Simply Safe has no installation costs and no hidden fees, so you can protect your home and family the smart way. Right now, listeners of this podcast can get 10% off any home security system only if you go to simplysafenpr.com. We'd like to thank our sponsor, Ting, a mobile service provider helping people save a lot of money on their cell bill. With Ting, you pay for what you use, not what you think you'll use. There are no overage charges, penalties, or contracts, and Ting is the first mobile service provider to allow you to have devices on different networks under the same account. And if you need help, you'll talk to a real person immediately and not be put on hold. To confirm that your device and number can be brought to Ting, go to cartalk.ting.com and get $25 off Ting service. Hi, we're back. You're listening to Car Talk with us, Click and Clack, the Tappert Brothers, and we're here to talk about cars, car repair, and, of course, the answer to last week's puzzler. Yeah. This was, I think I mentioned, and this was a hint, by the way. This was a huge hint. It was a semi-automotive puzzler sent in by someone named Bill Kojak, I think, and it went like this. He he wrote, last year a friend of mine and his wife went on vacation to Key West and spent most of their time either sport fishing on the high seas or carousing on Duval Street. And my wife and I prefer a very different kind of vacation. We like hiking and camping and using Stone Age toilet facilities. So we (laughs) spent most of our vacation in the woods in California and the Pacific Northwest. So we got the Pacific Northwest and we got Key West. Key West. Pacific Southeast. Atlantic Southeast. (laughs) When we returned from our trips, I said to my friend that on our vacation, we saw something that when written down, 
has all five vowels, and the vowels make up five of the seven letters in the word. In fact, we, we saw not just one, but a few of these things. My friend said, huh, you know, when we got to Key West, we also saw something that when written down has all five vowels in its seven letters. In fact, we saw quite a few of these as well. Each of us wrote down our seven-letter word and then exchanged papers. Lo and behold, we had written the same word. <gasps> but what I saw and what he saw were very different things. What did each of us see? And there were lots of hints, including the fact that it was, I mentioned earlier, semi-automotive. This was an excellent puzzler. You thought so, eh? I did. Well, what he saw were some rather large sport utility vehicles called sequoias. And what we saw were some the very trees. large trees called sequoias. Wow. Pretty good, eh? That is superb. <laughs> so who's our winner? We had no winner. Nobody, <laughs> get, nobody got it right. The winner this week is Kate Kelly from Drewsville, New Hampshire. And for having her answer selected at random... From among all the correct answers that we got, Kate will get a $26 gift certificate to the Shameless Commerce Division at cartalk.com, with which she can pick up our newest CD, Maternal Combustion, Calls About Moms and Cars. Which includes the call in which our dear mother, Elizabeth, revealed which one of us she loved the, the best. Actually, I think she just wound up saying she'd take a bad case of bed bugs over <laughs> either one of us. <laughs> Anyway, we'll have a new puzzler still to come, so stick around for that. In the meantime, you can call us about your car. We're at 888-CAR-TALK. That's 888-227-8255. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Aloha. This is Father John Millen calling from Honolulu. Padre. For Father John. Now, wait a minute. How long have you... How do you... If you're a priest, how do you manage to get stationed? Wait a minute. We're better than that. If you died and went to heaven, how would you know? <laughs> well, it's very hard to die here. It's harder here than most places. You're already in heaven. Right. I mean, Absolutely. everyone thinks they're Someone in heaven already. Do how do you get them to come to church? Well, it's hard, but uh, I'm still working at it, and they come once in a while. See, so. here in Boston, they get us to come to church because they say if you die... You'll be going to heaven where it's nice and warm and beautiful, not like this stinking town you live in of Boston. But you well, because, can't use that ploy. Right. Because you've been doing such a good job of going to church, I'd like to tell you that you have won a chance to stay with me in Honolulu. Oh. You have to provide your own trip, but I'll pick you up at the airport and give you a place to stay. I'm a married priest with, uh, with a daughter, and I'm an Episcopal priest, and I'd love to have you come and stay with us. We don't have to lie down on some pew in the back of a, in a <laughs> no, church, no, no. do we? <laughs> a real house. Do you live anywhere near Waikiki? Yes, we're halfway between Diamond Head and Cocoa Head. Real easy no, drive to Waikiki. No. Ooh, 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 how sweet it is. Father, any question you have, we'll take care of it. <laughs> Terrific. So well, shoot. Mike, my question is, as a priest, I don't get a chance to buy a new car very often, and I'm probably like a lot of other people. Yes, and, I'm, all, uh, I'm with it, you. You know, I don't look at cars all that much until it gets time to buy one. And uh, then I start paying attention to them and picking out one and trying to figure out which car to get and the best price. Yeah. Since the Lord has sent me here to Hawaii, I thought this time around I might go for a Mazda Miata. But you have kids, you said? Well, I have three grown children that are on the mainland and uh, oh, a 10-year-old here. The, you, I guess your 10-year-old will not be able to come with you and your wife in the Miata because there really is no room, as you know, for but the third person. That may have been his intention. Maybe That's my already... intention. I figure that way I'll get to be part of the conversation. Otherwise, I'd be left out. Exactly. If, if, if they're both there at the same time. So, I mean, what's your question? There's no well, my question, question here. Is, how do I get the best price? How do you get the best price? Can, can, I, can I do like we do on jobs and uh, send a bid sheet to, to each dealer and try to get a bid? Will that work? <laughs> uh, how's the best way to get a good price? Gee, that's, that's a good question. See, here in the, in the north... We use the mafia, but I don't know if they have a chapter, as we say, in Honolulu. Well, I don't imagine you have a whole bunch of Mazda dealers in Honolulu. Actually, four on Oahu. Four? Well, you need to pit one against the other. First, you need to find out one guy's price. Then subtract $1,000 from that and go to the other guy and tell him. And tell him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the technique, I remember when I bought a new car. It was 1965, and I'll tell you what I did. I did exactly what my this brother... This was the last time he bought a new car. Yeah, it was the one and only time I bought a new car. <laughs> <laughs> I did exactly what my brother said. I went to one dealer, and I told him exactly what I wanted, and he gave me a price, which I believe at the time was $6,000. <laughs> no, that car? No, less than three. 
Yeah. Less you know than how much three. it was? I remember exactly how much I paid yeah, for Yeah, I'm going to tell you. I can't 20, tell you what car it was. $27.85. That's very close. It was actually twenty five five. It was for a... And I you wanted ten grand from me <laughs> for junk in that sleek black junk box? Appreciation. Appreciation. I The price went up. So I went to one dealer. He said twenty eight. I went to the second dealer. I said, yeah, I can get it from... In fact, the two dealers were... One was uh, Buck. Yeah. He sold AMCs. He told me twenty eight. I went to the dealer in Mansfield, Mass., the name of which I forgot now, and said, gee, I can get it up the street for twenty seven. He said You lied. He said, I'll give it to you for twenty six five. So I went back to Bach and said, I can get it for twenty five five. He said, Go get it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went back and I got the twenty six five guy down to twenty five five. Really? Yeah, I mean it's a it's a twelve step process. Now when you went to look at this car, you went in in person to look at it. Do you wear civilian garb? Uh, probably. I can't remember. That's the, my big question. What's? I don't think, think this has ever been tested. Are you? You could do a test. You have four dealerships there. I would go into two of the dealerships in civilian garb and see how you get treated and what kind of a price you get, and then wear your uniform <laughs> for the other two dealerships. And if you do better with the uniform. Think about how even, this is going to work. Even sleazeball salesmen will <laughs> tremble in their boots <laughs> at the thought of trying to cheat you, Padre. Yeah. Because they'll, they'll, they'll never know, deep down, what the consequences might be. Exactly. I mean, right. they might chisel their own mothers, <laughs> but not a priest. Yeah. So I, w- I would use the power of the cloth, so to speak. I would, too. And if we find out that you get... Better results. We'll go in business we'll selling, <laughs> selling the we'll collars. We'll go in business selling collars. <laughs> we'll give that away every week instead of baseball hats. <laughs> we'll call, call it the Father John used car <laughs> caller. <laughs> well, Father, we're going to have to rely on you to, to give us the give us the data on this. I I am curious to know how you make out though. And send us a postcard or uh, send us a, a snapshot. Yeah, a snapshot. You at the wheel. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Father. Good and luck. You guys come and see us, and you, you do have a place to stay if you come and see us. All right. Great. Okay. We'll be there. Thank All you. Right. Bye-bye. Aloha. Aloha. Hey, do you know what it's time for? Uh, time to try and convince the IRS that bribing the FCC is a legitimate business <laughs> expense? <laughs> no. It's time to play Stump the Chumps. Well, every once in a while, we let a previous caller back onto the show to find out whether our advice was good, bad, awful, horrendous, <laughs> libelous, uh, or whatever. So so who's this week's contestant? This week's contestant is Allison, whom I don't remember, a wee Scottish lass living in Denver, Colorado. I'm beginning to remember her. I have no recollection. She, we have notes here, though. Don't worry. She called us a few months back because her 94 VW Golf was having trouble starting in the mornings. <laughs> Yeah. It's like, rrr, rrr, rrr. Okay, but does it crank slowly or does it crank at the regular speed? It Here's crank- regular speed. Rrr, 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 rrr. Here's slowly. Rrr, rrr. Slowly. Slowly. Oh. Tell me you want your money back on the spark plugs, the wires, the cracked <laughs> breather. The breather. And everything else they might have done. The breather. If you told them that. Might have <laughs> so once we overcame the language barrier, <laughs> the breather. <laughs> What did we tell her to do? We told her to have the battery, the starter, and the charging system tested because it sounded to us a lot like a bad battery. It sounded like it would start the car once, but not have enough juice to start it a second time if it stalled. Well, let's find out. Allison, how's your breather, lass? Hello, guys. My breather's (laughs) fine. Thank you very much. (laughs) Okay, Allison, before you tell us anything, tell us whether uh, we have to do the common Miranda thing. Have we ever spoken to you about this since that last phone call? I've not heard from you guys at all, no. And do you swear that you have not been influenced by us, our staff, or the Denver Bagpipers <laughs> local? <laughs> no, huh? No. No. Good. So, okay. So what happened? Well, what happened, I took the car and I checked out the battery, the alternator and everything. Yeah. And you guys were right. The alternator was dodgy. Yay! <laughs> we got one right! You did. <laughs> So you had the alternator replaced? Yeah, and then a week later, the oil pump failed. Oh, well. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> That's just bad luck. Yeah, I'm just going to get a new engine by the time I'm finished. <laughs> anyway, 
Uh, we haven't talked to you in quite a while. Uh, how, yeah. how are things going in Denver? Things are going well in Denver. It's still beautiful and working hard. So, yeah, you're working. You met- and I've had so much feedback from the first time I was on. Really? That it's been really flattering. It's been lovely. Did you meet any fellas yet? Um, a few nice gentlemen have been in contact. and Oh, nice. Yeah, it's been really sweet. It's been really lovely. Well, great. I Thank wish you. you the very best, Allison. Thank you very much. And thanks for coming back. No problem. And don't and don't lose that accent. It's charming. And, and uh, good luck with your breather. <laughs> thanks, guys. See you. Bye-bye. 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 <laughs> if you want to talk to us, our number is 1-888-CAR-TALK. That's 888-227-8255. How's your breather anyway? I mean, this thing? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, this is Jenny calling from Albany. Hi, Jenny. Jenny, how you doing? Albany, New, New York, I trust. Right. There's I only one Albany in the entire country. Just like there are 55 Fairviews and Midways, there's only one Albany in the entire country. Wrong. And it's in Georgia. <laughs> Where are you from, Jenny? From New York. Oh, Albany, New York. The other Albany. Yeah, there are two. There are two Albanys. What's up, Jenny? Well, I was in 1986, Honda Civic. Honda Civic, yeah. Okay. The problem is, about two weeks ago... I was, got locked out, and I was outside of Albany, where it's really rural, and um, so I went to a house, and I was with a friend, and we got a hangar. What did you do? You locked the keys in the car? Yeah. Want to hear the story? No, yeah, we do, we do, we do. I mean, okay, well, we oh, got... I, I, this is a family show, Jenny, okay. and <laughs> since you're telling us that you're, you're out in the rural whatever area of Albany, and you locked the keys in the car, please be careful what the story is. <laughs> Because okay. I got all kinds of prurient ideas flowing around in my head. No, no, no. This is totally legit. Oh, okay. We are going running. Uh huh. Oh, so I see. I separate my house keys and my car keys so I can carry less. Right. Yeah. Okay. I Meanwhile, the sun's about to go down. We're wearing shorts, so it's getting kind of chilly. And I realized that the key, I locked the car keys in instead of the house keys. Uh, so mm. we went to a house and we got a hanger. Mm. And we we're trying to. The box for the doors on the inside of the door. Yeah. And so we were trying to slip it in by the window. Like how Fat it chance. It's very hard to do. Right. Well, that took a while. Yeah. yeah. And then out of nowhere, this van drives up and happens to have a Slim Jim in the back of his car. He ah. just happened to have one because on weekends he steals cars, right? He does, from the fair, he told us. <laughs> yeah. And so anyway, he opened the door right up, you know. Oh, no yeah. Problem. Mm-hmm. And uh, we went running. <laughs> we yeah. came well, the, the the day of the of the coat hanger is pretty much gone. Sometimes you can manage to get the coat hanger be- through the door, because the the weather stripping of the door leaves enough room if you bend it and rip it and tear it apart <laughs> for you to get in. But mostly with windows, you're done for. Hmm. It's getting very very difficult in my. I mean, in in the used car stealing <laughs> business. I'm sorry. Yeah. So anyway. So anyway, everything was fine. Until the next day, when now my door doesn't lock. Right. Uh, oh. In inside the door, it looks like it's on the lock position. Right. But it's jammed. I can't do it with my hand or with a key. Right. You need to take the door apart. I do. Well, not you, maybe, but someone needs to take the door apart because in in his in his ardor to get the the door open for you quickly, he probably bent one of the rods that runs from the from the door lock, the real lock. To the to the handle on the inside, there's a there's a rod that runs across. So when you lock the door from the inside with your with your finger, right? Thumb. It, I always use my thumb. <laughs> yes. Yeah, <so>, okay. <laughs> Me too. Your thumb. Yeah. You lock it with your thumb. That rod pushes the lock and does the same thing that you would do if you had turned the key. Yeah. And it's jammed. Okay. It's jammed it's, or, it'll, it'll or it'll bent be, or whatever. It'll be easy to fix though. And if you can't figure out what's wrong with it when you take it apart, take the other door apart and look at that one. <laughs> <laughs> then you'll have two that are apart. <laughs> Pretty difficult. I mean, no, should this I take is... it in somewhere? Yeah, I would take it. Someplace. I would take it in because it'll probably charge you less than an hour's labor to fix it. Because someone that's done it before will be able to fix it. Right. In this no is time. a less than fifty dollar job. Oh, great. Yeah, unless he broke something. But why do you lock the car anyway? Well, I don't know. I'm opposed to locking. I have never locked a car. I always have convertibles, and you should never lock a convertible. But I guess a Civic is. Not a convertible. I never locked my car either. I'm yeah. philosophically opposed to locking cars. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, the guys who are going to steal the car, having the door open is not going to prevent them from stealing it. Right, and you saw how fast this guy with the Slim Jim opened it, so why lock it? He probably opened it faster than you could open it with the key. You're right. So why bother? 
Well, if I lived in Midway, I definitely would not run for George. <laughs> I think we all need to rebel. I think we all need to leave our cars unlocked. No more locks. Okay. And it would drive the insurance guys crazy. Ah, and if they want cares? us to lock our cars, every, let them follow you around, and every time you park, let them lock it. That's right. <laughs> Stop locking your cars. Okay. Save the money. And you can't lock the keys in it. See it, Jenny. Thanks a lot. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hey, you know, uh, I think it's time for us to take a little break. I have to admit that I've never liked the fact that we take a break during this part of the show. I think it sends the wrong message to the listeners. Yeah? Well, what message would that be? Well, that the radio station sounds so much better when we're not talking. <laughs> <laughs> they already know that. <laughs> we'll be back with more of your calls and a brand new puzzler in just a minute, so don't go away. Every Sunday morning, I'm out there with my car. I bondo to the bumper. Some would say you've gone too far. Put it on like frosting, a little at a time. I have a bondo technique I can truly say is mine. Bondo queen, bondo girl, bondo babe, that's cool. It's now my life's ambition. I'm a bondo fool. And even though New England Patriot linebackers run and tackle their radios whenever they hear us say it, this is NPR. We'd like to thank our sponsor, Star Talk's new podcast, Playing with Science. Now, if you're into science, you probably know Neil deGrasse Tyson's hit podcast, Star Talk Radio. New from Star Talk, Playing with Science brings famous athletes, sports experts, and celebrated scientists together to explore stories behind iconic moments in sports with guests like Lance Armstrong, Hope Solo, and Neil deGrasse Tyson himself. Subscribe to Playing With Science from Star Talk in iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Linda Holmes from NPR's Pop Culture Happy Hour podcast. What has pointy ears, a cape, a huge ego, and knees that don't bend? That's right, Lego Batman. To get the skinny on his new movie and lots of other good stuff to watch and read, find Pop Culture Happy Hour on the NPR One app or at npr.org slash podcasts. <laughs> We're back. You're listening to Car Talk with us, Click and Clack, the Tappet Brothers, and we're here to discuss cars, car repair, and the, the new puzzler. I can't Now, you've got to pay wait. attention to all the details. I'm going to. I, I can say with, with, with almost honesty <laughs> that, <laughs> that everything you're about to hear is rele- relevant and pertinent and, and really? useful. No, Not you really, can't no. say that. Well, the germ of this puzzle was presented by one of my customers who, who also happens to be and has been for the past 30 years a traveling salesman. He he, he travels around from town to town yeah, okay. selling whatever he sells. I think he sells nuts and bolts, et cetera. Yeah. Cotter pins and the like. Great. And, and uh, like I said, he's been a salesman for, for 30 years. And when he first started out on this job, I guess he immediately fell into disfavor with the company hierarchy. Because they assigned him, he started in the in the middle of winter, and they assigned him such uh, uh, exotic places like Moose Jaw, Maine, Freesia Butt, New Hampshire, places like that. So he would have oh. to travel by car from one location to another. And he often found himself, because he was a salesman driving from town to town in the, in the winter, looking for cheap motels in which to spend the night. So you you with me so far? I'm with you so you, far. You are, huh? Yeah. Well, that's too bad. Mostly in the great northeast here. Mostly. Oh, yeah. His 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 route was Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, upstate New York. Te- Man. Terrible. He really ticked somebody off, didn't well, he? Well, worse than that, when the weather got nice, they shipped him down to Florida, <laughs> Georgia, <laughs> Alabama. And then as soon as the winter came, back he goes. Back he goes. Yeah. And he began to notice, he said, a disturbing thing. When he would stop at these motels, oftentimes the owner of the motel was also the clerk, and they'd have you fill out that little card, you know, name, mm-hmm. address, phone, home phone, in case you skip out in the middle of the night. And he said in some of those they had a little thing that said occupation. And in, in, in some cases they had nothing that asked for occupation, but it seemed to be always the case that the motel owner would ask him what he did for a living. Really? And then when he said he was a salesman, he would almost always be assigned a room on the second floor if they, if they had one or if the, if the motel had a second floor. Right. And, so he, they, oh, and then he, he, he asked me if I knew why this happened. And I said, I didn't have a clue. So, so he gave me a clue. He did. 
well, I, I asked him if it had anything to do, to do with the car that he drove. And he said, I guess you could say so. At the time, I was driving a Volkswagen. And that's all, that's right. all I knew. Yeah. And from that... I was able to get the answer out of him when I got him in a headlock. <laughs> now, if you think you know the yeah. answer, write that answer on the back of a $20 bill or a ripe melon. <laughs> and send it to Puzzler Tower, Car Talk Plaza, Box 3500, Harvard Square, Cambridge. Our fair city. Matt 02238. Or you can email your answer to us from cartalk.com. If you'd wow. like to call us, the number is one eight 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 car talk That's 888 888- Two two seven eight two five five. You haven't done the double triple thing for the whole show, you know. You're on car 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 talk. <laughs> car 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 talk talk talk. <laughs> Hello, is someone there? This is Dick calling from St. Paul, Minnesota. Hi, Dick. What's up? Well, I got a small problem with an '88 uh, Voyager van. It's <clears throat> excuse me. It's not a um, a major thing, but it's an annoyance. In fact, the uh, wife doesn't even notice it. Like my brother. <laughs> He's not a maybe. He's just an annoyance, and I got, I got to put up with him. And I understand. I will answer this question. <laughs> Go ahead. Exactly what this is. Yeah, it's an annoyance. But anyway, it it <laughs> vibrates uh, when you see when you're decelerating at about 55 miles an hour. Take your foot off the gas, you get kind of a buzz. This has got the four cylinder with an automatic in it. Ah, oh, and uh, bulletproof. Yeah, but a couple of uh, I talked to a couple of Chrysler mechanics. One guy said it was the tires. I said no, it's not the tires because. It does it at any RPM. I can hold it in second gear, and it'll do it again at 2,500 RPM. So 2,500 RPM. That's the magic number. That's the number. Yeah. And another guy I talked to said uh, it's the exhaust system. He says there's something loose there. He says what we do, and I can't imagine this, but he says what we do is we hang a weight on the catalytic converter. So I have access to some uh, some metal, and I, I hung about a 16-pound piece of steel. Up. <laughs> 16 pounds? <laughs> No, but it's still there. It's, Not really. It's all. You didn't really it's hang six. Any. You didn't really hang sixteen yeah, pounds. Six, but that's about sixteen pounds. Yeah, big plate. I bolted it to the converter. <laughs> <laughs> you, why don't you just hang a couple of bags of sugar? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get a bowling ball under there. <laughs> uh, he did actually, but it disturbed the directional stability of the vehicle. <laughs> Jeez, that's great, Dick. So, who is this guy? Well, I, he has to go unnamed. He's a uh, he's a Chrysler mechanic, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, he actually might be right. Uh, you've you've reached the harmonic frequency of something at twenty five. Yeah, you're getting RPM. what's called the sympathetic vibration. Uh-huh. That's Does right. Does it kind of whimper at the and, same time? I can, I can and I can feel for you about this. <laughs> Does it sound like it's coming from the engine compartment? Well, it's it's hard. You can feel it. You feel it in the floor. You feel it in the steering wheel. Uh, it's not the front end. I had that looked at, and uh, mm-hmm. new tires, balance, and everything. And can you sit still without the vehicle in motion and get it to make the noise? Yeah. So you can just in neutral. Yeah, you can you can rev it to twenty five hundred. And it'll it'll, and it'll come right in. And it'll yeah. is that the noise? Yeah, kind of, yep. Well, I haven't made it yet. I'm just getting. <laughs> But that's it, huh? Yeah. Well, then it's probably a loose heat shield on the exhaust system. A heat shield? Yeah, if take, it's a, if take it's it to a your ver- garage. First of all, real... take that stupid weight off. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, who knows? The weight might work for somebody. I, the guy does, wants to go unnamed. He, he said it was an actually. He said they actually had like a kit that they bolted on there that's a heavy weight. And I said, well, how heavy? And he says, oh, 15 pounds or so, he said. Really? No. I've never heard of You got this a pencil, one. Dick. Write this down for this guy. <laughs> You're nuts. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's <laughs> he is a little bit wacko. Yeah, I, I mean, I, it is possible that if the exhaust system is riding real close to the frame, uh-huh. that it could, at some frequency, start hitting the frame. But that would be a much heavier sound than the sound that you described, because that would be the exhaust system pipes and or mufflers, whatever, uh-huh. hitting the frame, which would be more of a rumbling sound. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's not doing that. And it's not doing that. No. So if it's doing the tinkly kind of sound, then it's either the heat shield, which has to be re-welded or removed or rehabbed. Reworked. Or reworked. Or it's inside the catalytic converter. That's probably what it is. You but, ha- What size engine do you have in this thing? 2.5. 2. Oh, yeah. This should actually not be so hard to find because he's got to put it up. As long as you can get it to make the noise while you're not moving, uh-huh. put it up on the lift. Rev it up to 2,500 RPM, and if it's the heat shield, he can put his hand right on it and, go, ah! and burn his fingers and figure out that that's it. And if he's down there and he can 
grab onto the heat shield without burning himself, and it doesn't make the noise go away. It's probably inside the catalytic converter. Yeah, what he'll do, I mean, he haven't put it on the lift, and what he'll do is while you rev it up to 2500 and get it to make the noise, he'll move things around with his big pry bar. And one of the things he'll move around is one of the heat shields, and he'll probably get the noise to go away. And you'll say, when I don't hear the noise anymore, I'll toot the horn. Right, and he'll, he'll jump right through the bottom of that car. <laughs> it's not. This is not hard to find because you're lucky that it makes the noise at rest. Is it worse when the engine's cold? No, it doesn't make any difference there. Okay, well, I, good. I, I thought maybe it might be like a dynamic balancer or something that was out of whack. But. No, I rather doubt it. I rather it wouldn't make a rattle. You'd get a vibration from that, but not a rattle. Right. A rattle is a, is a lightweight piece of steel. Probably something a little less than sixteen pounds. It's rattling around. <laughs> yeah, like about an ounce. <laughs> Send you that weight then, do you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah mail it to us, will you? <laughs> See you later, Dick. Hey, good luck, Dick. Okay. Bye bye. One eight 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 car talk. That's eight double eight double two seven eighty two double four. Oh, we should have had Allison, yeah. the, the gal from Scotland, do our phone number. Oh man, call her back. Right? We should have everyone who's on Stump the Chumps do our phone number. Think about how but much time it would save you. Especially her with her beautiful accent. Oh, man. Next time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hello, you're on car If talk. not, we'll get Sean Connery. There you go. <laughs> He's Welsh, you know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, you're Hello, anyone there? Hi, this is Carl. Carl with, with a K. No, with a C. Uh, yeah. Where are you from? I'm from Smoke Free Marblehead. Marblehead, Massachusetts? That's correct. Birthplace of the American Navy. No, yeah. really? That's true. First ship commissioned by General George Washington was built in Marblehead. What was he doing way out in Marblehead? He got lost. <laughs> <laughs> On Route 1A? <laughs> yeah, so. You often wonder. I mean, even now, it takes an hour to get to Marblehead. It must have taken him a week to get there. Anyway, Carl, <laughs> what can we do for you? Well, my daughter bought a 1994 Mazda B3000 pickup truck Yeah. with about 100,000 miles on it. She drove from Boston to Colorado. She called me and said, Dad, there's something unusual about this truck. As I drove along, I had more gas than when I started. <laughs> the gas kept moving towards full. Really? And when I stopped to fill it up, when I topped it off, it read empty. <laughs> That's Awesome. Really? I like that one. <laughs> so, but she must have started out with a full tank. Did um, it read empty then? I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. Um, no, I think it broke en route. Well, I'll give you a little more history. Yeah, please. We're gonna when need we it. Uh, went to the dealership and checked out the vehicle, they said there's two problems that we know of with the vehicle. It needs a new windshield, and it needs a new float in the gas tank. Yeah, that's the sending unit. And they said, we'll fix it. So we know that they went ahead and put in a new float. Well, how do you know that? Oh. Uh, actually, I trust them. This is a dealership? Yeah. And you trust them? Yes. It's a cousin, huh? You, <laughs> are you interested in a bridge? <laughs> Interesting. I suspect that the problem is not the sending unit, but uh, something that would give you the same symptom, and that is a chafed wire. In the, in the, on the in, way. on the Between the sending unit and the gauge. But see, what she described is kind of interesting because she said as she was driving, it gradually moved closer and closer to the full mark. That's right. It's an inverse relationship. See, and usually if you have like a chafed wire, it doesn't act like that. No, it doesn't. It, you, it would shoot up usually. It usually it shoots to full. So... It's... So I'm going to my fallback position. <laughs> Wait a minute. You may have something, but we have to answer, how is it doing it gradually? I... Or we could throw it back to Carl and tell him he's a liar. That's a possibility. Yeah, we've done I mean, that. I mean, you know, he may, be, he may be a follower of the old premise, don't let the facts get in the way of... Of a good story. <laughs> I, I, I must admit that I do subscribe to that philosophy. <laughs> yeah, as do case, we all. <laughs> but but in this case, it doesn't apply. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm I'm going to predict that the gauge is faulty. However, you should question your daughter, whom I'm of course you trust her, but she too may subscribe to the never let the facts get in the way of a good story. He's a writer. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. And so, shall you... I brag about your writing? <laughs> yeah, of course you should. Sure. What does she write? What does she write? She she's uh, actually won national poetry slams and uh, really, yeah. 
Does she need an agent? Ah. Are you volunteering? My brother's always looking for work. <laughs> Actually, my brother's wife is always looking for work for him. <laughs> yeah, not for herself. <laughs> no, but the truth of the matter is she may not have been quite straight or clear. We don't want to accuse her of anything, but she may have been trying to give you a good story. And if, in fact, you question her and she, she says, oh, you're absolutely right. What it does is it doesn't creep up toward full. It's on full all the time. That still wouldn't explain why it went to empty when she filled the tank. That's correct. And she may say, well, it didn't really. And if she does answer that way to those two questions, then it is a chafed wire someplace. But let's assume that she's telling the truth, because women don't lie like guys do. <laughs> and and in which case, I agree with my brother. Not it's that in... we know of. <laughs> <laughs> Not that we know of. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Either they don't lie or they're really, oh, they're really, so good. really good at it. <laughs> but I would use the bright lights if you have to, Carl. All and, right. And yeah. you give I'll, give your I'll daughter a, a good interrogation. And if you don't get any more information, then suspect the gauge. Will do. See you later. Thanks. Bye. Bye bye. 1888 Car Talk. That's 888 227 8255. Hello, you're on Car Talk. It's Allison again from Denver. Uh, Allison from Denver. <laughs> Allison, excellent. <laughs> this is great. We need you to do our phone number. Uh-huh. And you have such a beautiful, beautiful accent <laughs> that we could play it week after week. Of course, you'd get one hundred and fifty dollars every time we used your voice. Oh, right, of wow. course. Fat chance. <laughs> <laughs> hey. So if you could just say. The number is one eight 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 car talk. That's eight 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 two two seven eight two five five or eight double eight double two seven eighty two double five. Okay, what one do you want? You do all whatever, of them. Do whatever it. you want to do. Whatever you want. Whatever okay. is most comfortable for you. Okay. One triple eight double two seven eight two double five one eight 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 car talk. Oh, hoo, hoo. <laughs> Allison, I love thank it. you. We love you. <laughs> Thanks for being sport. a good sport. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. 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 Oh, man. <laughs> now if we could only get someone to do the rest of the show. <laughs> well, you just made my day. <laughs> you made ours. Thanks, Allison. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> well, it's happened again. You've squandered another perfectly good hour listening to Car Talk. Our esteemed producer is Doug the Subway Fugitive, not a slave to fashion, Bongo Boy Berman. Our associate producers are David the Calves of Belleville Green and Catherine Frau Blucher Fenelosa. Our web lackey is Doug the Old Gray Mayor, assisted by Connie Bridgeford. Our theme music is by David Dog Grisman. And our technical, spiritual, and menu advisor, just back from the Fargo <laughs> Fur Feather and Fin Fry Later Fun Fest, <laughs> is John Bugsy Lawler. Our public opinion pollster is Paul Murky of Murky Research, assisted by statistician Margin Overa. Our Customer care representative is Haywood Jabuzov. Our long distance truck driver is Etienne Wheeler. Our director of top secret strategy is Donatello Nobody. Our emergency <laughs> preparedness director is Ron Lykel. Our solicitor of new ideas is Hobie Quiet. Our sexual harassment investigator is Hank Panky. Our meteorologist from the New Delhi office is Luke Autovindo. Our eBay specialist is Selma Junkoff. Our rental property manager is Ulysses Up. <laughs> Our construction <laughs> manager is Dustin Dubree. Our Russian chauffeur is Peekoff and Dropoff. Lifetime of silence whenever they hear us say it. This is NPR.